Hello, in this video I will derive the learner index for the Carnot model. We're going to start with an n firm Carnot and we're going to derive the firm's marginal revenue as a function of price and the price elasticity of demand. So for firm 1, revenue is price times quantity where the quantity here, this Q subscript 1 is firm 1's output. This capital Q represents the market output where the market output is output of firm 1 plus firm 2 all the way to firm N. And to get marginal revenue, we're going to take the partial derivative of the revenue function with respect to firm 1's output, and we're going to get this result right here. So this is the marginal revenue of firm 1. Just rewriting that last step. We're going to note here that the partial derivative of market output with respect to firm 1's output is going to be 1. And the reason for that is the following assumption. When setting output, we assume the other firm's output is constant. So when firm 1 is setting its output, it's assuming that the output of other firms is constant. Uh, other firms won't increase or decrease their output as a result of whatever firm 1 does. So making that substitution then, setting that uh, term here equal to 1, we have this result. I'm going to factor out a price term on the right-hand side. Okay, so I'm factoring out the price term on the right-hand side. And notice here I have to have this uh, P in the denominator. If I were to multiply this P back through, those P's would cancel and be left with this term here. Okay, just again rewriting that result. All right, now the important part is we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of this last term in parentheses by n, the number of firms. Okay, so n divided by n, that's just 1, so we can do that algebraically. And here is a key that the number of firms times the output of firm 1 will just equal the market output. We're assuming that all firms are the same, so each firm produces an identical level of output. So now I'm going to make a substitution where I have n times the output of firm 1. I'm just going to put in the market output, capital Q. So I did that. Next thing to recognize is that 1 over the price elasticity of demand is given by this equation right here, which looks like almost exactly what we have in parentheses up here. So we're going to make a substitution, and the only thing I have to add in there is the n. Okay, the, so 1 over the price elasticity of demand. Uh, we're pull, plugging that in, and we still have n here, the number of firms in the Cornell market hanging around. So this is an expression for marginal revenue. Uh, let's uh, do an example here. We got a Cornell duopoly where the number of firms is 2. So here's marginal revenue, and I'm just going to substitute 2 in for n. So that's what marginal revenue looks like for a two-firm Carnot market. Profit maximization occurs where MR equals MC. So setting MR equal to MC. And we, if we want, we could write something like this. You could think of this as a markup pricing rule. Okay, what are we marking up? Marginal cost, and that's going to be a, a function of the price elasticity of demand. So in terms of the learner index then, just rewriting this over here, multiplying this P through parentheses, moving some things around. This would be the learner index for a Carnot duopoly. 
the only thing that differs from a learner index from a monopoly is this two here. With a monopoly, this two would just be one. So in general, the learner index for an N firm Carnot market would be given like this. And just to summarize then, as n increases, the learner index gets smaller. As n approaches, as n approaches uh, infinity, price will go to marginal cost, and the market becomes highly competitive. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video interesting.